Hoi guys, welcome or welcome back. This is Heidi DIY Knitting Podcast where me, Heidi, does some DIY. Almost always knitting. And today we'll chat about whips and FOs, so finished objects and what's on my needles. So, you know, the classic knitting podcast style. I'm on a bit of a time limit today since I have my five-year-old here with me. She is a bit ill and is at home and she's watching cartoons here in our working space, almost next to me. So there might be weird cuts and interruptions, but we'll make do with what we have. So let's jump straight in. Have some coffee or tea or drink of your choice. I'm having decaf coffee and it is a lovely autumn day here. Sun is shining and leaves are bright and I'm enjoying myself. But yeah, let's jump straight into FOs. I have technically two or technically three uh, finished objects and I'll start with the least exciting one and it is this storm sweater again. So it was in my last finished objects episode and I was pondering what to do with the sleeves and since they were a bit short but I ran out of yarn because it was a wool in it cone and I live in Finland. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a wool in it cone and I live in Finland, so it's not the cheapest to ship here. And I did not enjoy the yarn so much that I would really want to order it more. <coughs> but I'm also very particular with colors, so it I know it would have annoyed me so much if the cuff was like even slightly different color. So I was in a bit of a pickle, but I found a solution because as you can see, this matches perfectly and I might need to do some jump cuts because she's coughing because she is sick, but yeah. So. I did the cuffs again and they are around two times as long as they were at the beginning and now I'm happy with them because I like long cuffs and I'm not a fan of a sleeve that ends right here. I want it to be like longer. So this is perfect. And this is so much softer. This is actually Phil Galana's Saga, which is 100% lamb's wool, but it is ridiculously soft. And it was also very cheap and <coughs> it was on sale. And it says that it is like very light fingering to lace weight. So it was classified as lace weight, so it was 300 meters per 50 grams, but it works as a fingering weight. Um, it is basically exactly the same thickness as the Woolenitz um, four ply uh, British wool, and it is so soft. It works so nicely since these areas are usually a bit more delicate than the other parts of the body so it was nice to get something a bit more soft to that area and i also decided to do the neckline again because i somehow managed to twist the original one so i decided to switch that also to the Phil Colana Saga, so it is also softer around my neck, which is also a sensitive area. 
and it looks so much nicer now when it's straight and a bit thicker so um, I tried to save yarn and I did it a bit uh, slimmer and I think this one just fits it a lot better and then I decided to make the bottom hem again so that it matches the length of the cuffs my brain just works like that it enjoys when things are aligned and there is some kind of symmetry um, this is unblocked so i should block the uh, cuffs so it doesn't do this wavy 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 motion um, because now it just curls up a bit since in here i didn't have enough of the vilcolana saga because <coughs> i i bought two balls and held it double um, but here I used one strand of the wool in it that I unraveled and one strand of the saga. So, <coughs> sorry. So it is a bit curly <laughs> because of the unraveled yarn, but it should go with blocking. And I'm so happy to finally be able to wear it. It is like this comforting hug especially now when it has been really cold in here it is already minus degrees in finland and it actually snowed this week so it is a bit we we kind of skipped autumn we have the leaves but we also have like green grass and it's snowing it is a weird mix of different seasons but i find that this goes really nicely with the current weather and it's not like it's not making you too hot but it keeps you warm i really like that i find that it is very useful to use this like final hours to make it as good as you can so i could have just left it with the twisted collar and shorter um, ribbing but i know i wouldn't have loved it so much so this um, quite a many hours of extra work especially with the longer rib here at the hem it was worth it for me and I think it is part of growing as a knitter to know that when it's good to unravel and do things again and also to use the extra time to make things more wearable for you so it's not just that you are creating this fast fashion in your needles uh, like things that you don't wear because they are um, not finished like properly there are like loose threads or you haven't thought about things true with them and this is actually an idea that I am toying about making a video so like self-made fast fashion that is an idea that I've, I have been conceptualizing in my head so let me know if you would like to have a video about that but yeah storm sweater ready to roll so have a zip and at this point i think i could tell you what i am wearing so this is my minto tea it is designed by Nitonomy. i was a test knitter for this uh, tea and it is one of my favorite mix it has this boxy fit a bit wider neckline and i made this using hiertegarn's lana cotton which is like cotton and merino blend and 
it is just lovely and again perfect for this weather when you are indoors it was uh, it was and it is a fingering weight uh, project so it took a lot of time and a lot of dedication but i really do like the minto cables that go like a bit of crisscross and create these kind of knots and I'm intending on making a Minto sweater later on, which is a thicker or chunkier weight version with long sleeves. But yeah, that's what I am wearing today. I have combined it with wool pants that are thrifted in this lovely green shade. And then I have my summer girl socks without the ruffle in this beautiful speckled yarn. This design is by Sari Nordlund and <clears throat> I was also a tester for these. And that was a spontaneous outfit of the day moment right there. Let's move on to the next finished object. And there is an ambulance going. So let's hope everything is okay. Here we have my finished May camisole. This was a super quick, enjoyable, very just, this was a perfect project. I'm not super keen on knitting uh, in stockinette. Just, I, I love the look, the simplicity, but it just, so boring for my brain but this it was just so quick and it results in this very clean look so May Camisole is a pattern by Creadia Studio and she's saying like yeah <laughs> she found a program she she likes um Pattern by Creadia Studio. It is knit up in DK weight yarn. And I think it's originally knit in some kind of combination of the Önling yarns, but I kind of calculated it should be around DK weight, but I'm not sure. I think they are sometimes very hard to interpret when they are written for specific yarn, but I knit mine in DK weight yarn. Uh, I used uh, Schachenmeyer's Tensel Merino in this lovely, um, what is the berry? Raspberry color. And last time I showed this to you, I was somewhere around here. So I needed just to do the small little split here and then it was done. I actually ended up knitting this um, back hem twice um, or doing the bind of twice because it was curling up a, a bit so I needed to do it a bit looser and it just it fits amazingly I already did a styling this top video on my Instagram so you should probably check that out as well after watching this video. And I really like this knitted, like kind of wide ripped bands. And I really like the shape on myself. There is room for shoulders. And overall, I think these ripped bands just pull the look together. They are knitted with very small needles so it just makes it look quite polished and yeah I really enjoy this top and I really like the split hem. It is very I think it it adds some more movement to the hem and I really like clothes that move with you when you move. 
So again, another part of my capsule wardrobe is done and yeah, I just really like the drape and the shine that Tencel tends to have and overall I highly recommend this pattern and I'm pretty sure I will make another one at some point in maybe maybe in one of my best neutrals um, that probably would be some kind of um, pewter brown or grayish or something like that. Also this kind of uh, dark gray would be really nice in this kind of top or white. Okay, I have so many ideas. I highly recommend it and I love it. She's trying to whistle. <laughs> that is so cute. This is my May camisole and I'm sure it will be a lovely layering piece during these colder months. Maybe not for the hottest of the hot summer months since there is a hefty dose of wool and it is kind of thicker side with the DK weight yarn. But yeah. I love it. And cheers! Tai. Pitää kato rakas olla vähän. Kato kun se tuolista kuuluu ääntä. Kiitos! Tolle voi olla. And the last one is actually on the blocking mat or on the floor. I do not own a blocking mat, so it is on a plastic, huge plastic bag, so it can dry. I might have to invest in a blocking mat or something, since it might um, help me with the drying. So yeah, this is the last finished object. And it is my waffle loop skirt. It is so nice. Just look at the texture. It is so nice. I'm kind of lost for words with this one. This was kind of in the beginning stages when I showed it to you last time. And now it's done. This stitch the waffle stitch is so engaging. I want to knit everything in this <laughs> waffle stitch. It is so nice and it is very simple, even though it might look somehow intimidating, but it is so simple. And it creates this lovely texture and some interest to this look. And there is a place for the elastic so I can put an elastic band in here, since this is an alpaca wool blend, which is from a small Finnish farm called Suvitien Pieneläintila. And um, I bought it second hand, but because it contains alpaca, it probably will stretch quite a lot. Um, so I will insert an elastic. <laughs> and, and it probably will be okay. I did some modifications. The biggest one being I did the short rows different, differently. Since I did not enjoy the look of the ones that was written in the pattern. And I think in the original pictures there was not there was no short rows since the pattern pictures don't have the this kind of like straight part of stockinette on the front and none of the pictures show the backside which is this one so i think it was added afterwards and i did not enjoy the look uh, so i made my own so this uh, short rows follow the 
follow the pattern almost to a T. There are some places where they are like a bit bigger sets of like stockinette part, but you cannot really see it. But it was really different in the original. I will put a picture here. I did not enjoy the look, so I made my own and now I'm happy with it. Here are some increases. I think they form a very nice line to the side. It is pretty. <coughs> it is pretty. And then it is straight. For some reason, this flares out a bit. Even though it is knitted with a tighter needles or tighter gauge at the end. I don't know what happened, but it flares out a bit. I will need to put the elastic in and try this on to see how I like it. And if I don't, I will have to knit the hem again. But it was not a lot of knitting since this is so engaging and it's done on bigger needles. And yeah, it is finished off with a stretchy bind off so the hem is stretchy so when you walk it doesn't like get caught when there is a um, unstretchy bind off so i think this will look awesome when styled with a a button up or just a basic like turtleneck and there is a already existing uh, waffle loop sweater. It has this texture and then there is these kind of cables on the front. I'm not super fan of that <coughs> design. I'm not the biggest fan of that design, but she is coming out with um, a sweater that is only this texture and then roll up neck. And I'm thinking I might have to do that one um, in a matching but not the same color with this one. So I can be a walking waffle and wear them together and separately. So I don't have uh, enough yarn to make that one also with this one this specific yarn, but I might have to go and get the Filcolana Saga to knit that one uh, because I really, really like that yarn. It is one of my new favorites and I might need a sweater in that. And it would be a nice light but still warm alternative. And imagine this with a roll neck and some a bit sheer tights and boots. Perfection. Yeah, but this is my waffle loop skirt. It is still a bit damp, so I will put it back. <laughs> and we shall continue with the whips. Those were my finished objects. I'm happy with them. They are lovely. And I am happy to say that I am content with the things I make. Sometimes I have had a phases when I get things done and then when I put them on then they are really just not good and not what I imagined and I have cut corners in the making process and I'm happy that I'm not doing that right now. And I'm really focusing on thinking that what I need and what I like. I have maybe some fiber in my eye. Ooh. Remember to have a sip of your drink if you have one. So let's move on to whips. The first thing I have is a cardigan for my girly who is sniffling over there and coughing but it is this one don't mind the ugly stitch markers this is from the making memories book 
some of you might remember that I started actually with another design which was knit in fingering weight yarn and it was on stockinette and eh, I just never <laughs> I, I ran out of steam with that one so I switched up my plans and started to make the Luca cardigan from that book. It has this beautiful stitch pattern which is like kind of elongated broken rib like uh, texture. It's really hard to see on camera because I have this variegated yarn. Normally I would not put this yarn and this pattern together, but this is the only yarn my daughter said that she might be able to wear from my um, stash. And yeah, that is what I'm doing. And she has a lot of sensory sensitivities, so superwash merino it is. This has also been very in enjoyable. It is kind of similar to the waffle stitch and I have enjoyed making it. It goes a lot faster than stocking it for me. Um, I decided to put the hem on cord because I was worried about running out of yarn. I was looking for an extra ball everywhere and I was sure that I just didn't have any, but I found an extra one. But I ended up finding it this morning, so it might be that I have enough yarn. So I'm knitting the sleeves first to the desired length. I probably will knit them quite long so we can fold them so she can grow with the cardigan and she wanted a bit longer one so I probably will just knit until I'm almost out of yarn and then do the button band and yeah I'm probably around halfway through this sleeve and yeah there is not really that much to talk about it there is an i think the construction is very basic raglan cardigan but the textured stitch makes it more interesting and engaging for me i'm a bit worried since there is the texture and there is this bumpiness that she might not enjoy it And in that case, I probably need to just sell it or donate it because I will give up knitting anything for her, especially clothes. So yeah, it needs sleeves, some length to the hem <coughs> and the button bands. And we could probably go and pick some cute buttons uh, together for this one. Oh yeah, and the yarn I'm using is Moku Yarn Merino Sock in the colorway Hertuatar, which is like Duchess in English. It is very basic sock yarn that is hand dyed. Uh, I already knit a sweater for myself in this yarn, but I realized that I cannot use it since it makes me so sweaty. Um, I, I just cannot use sock yarns in clothes. It doesn't work for me, but hopefully it works for her. And then there is this one. This was a Via Dolorosa project. I just... it did not go according to plan. This yarn is lovely. There is one strand of Cascade 220 
in the color Dusty Pink and also Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the colorway Dusty Rose. It is lovely. And originally I was going to make the sweater number 26 by my favorite things knitwear you know the one with the saddle shoulder and it is very boxy and cool well it was not cool on me because it was so boxy and huge even though i was on gauge um so that the armpits were somewhere around my uh, elbow so it was huge so I was very annoyed since I had done a lot of knitting and I was excited about it and then it ended up looking like poo. So I ripped the entire thing out and now I have this huge ball of yarn and a lot of small nuggets. Since the construction is a bit annoying in the Sweater number 26, you have to cut the yarn multiple times. So you have, you have these small yarn nuggets after you rip it out. So I didn't want to try it again in a smaller size, even though the design is beautiful. I was just, no, this isn't enough. So I asked you guys that what would you recommend for this yarn gumbo? And you recommended so many beautiful squares, but the one I decided to make is a 1031 sweater. I have no idea how she is intending to intended how she has intended us to pronounce the sweater, but it is this one. Um, a sweater by Ozera. And I have done this much. So this is basically the shoulder lines of the of the sweater, the back of the sweater. So there is not much yet, but I started this yesterday, so it is actually quite quick. It is done well in the pattern it is done on six millimeter needles, but I'm using five millimeters and I got the recommended gauge. It is a bit more airy fabric and I love that. And I think the colors play really nice together. And it's gonna be one of my new favorite sweaters. And you might be thinking, Heidi, you are knitting your capsule wardrobe. Where was the pink sweater? There was no pink sweater. I know there was no pink sweater, but now there is. Since plans are made for changing them. Um, I really wanted to use the Cascade 220 and the silk mohair that have been lingering in my stash. I craved something pink. It goes really nicely with the colors. And also, I don't have suitable yarn for the cable knit sweater that was originally in my capsule. I want, wanted and want a classic cabled sweater, but I don't have the yarn for it at the moment. I originally had this cream nep colored wooling it cone that would have probably worked, but I realized that the yarn is really not my favorite and I ended up selling it to my friend, so I don't want to use the time to knit in some yarn that is not my favorite or that I know that will be will be itchier than I would like. So I will buy some new yarn for that later on. Probably not this year since I have plenty of yarn for other projects that I can knit while while I'm wait waiting for the perfect yarn for that cable knit sweater. And I decided to go with this one, since it is lovely and it has been on my stash for a while. There's not much to say about this one, um, other than it is beautiful and I really like the shoulder detail. And I decided to go with that one because it has the 
like loose fit but it is still looking kind of narrow and it has a nice neckline and a split hem. I love a good split hem. So those were my knits and FOs this time. I would really like to know your thoughts about them and also please share what do you have on your needles. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye!